In this video, we solve problem 14.5.013 from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions textbook, 7th edition. We're asked to find the area of the surface given by z equals f of x, y that lies above the region r. And this time, f of x, y is the square root of x squared plus y squared. And r is the set of points x, y in the x, y plane um, such that the z values on our surface lie between 0 and 5. Okay, the first thing I always do with anything like this, um, any problem, is try to visualize what's happening. So I want to sketch this function z and visualize what that region r looks like so that we can define it a little bit better and evaluate the appropriate integral. So um, I would start with writing this as z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. And since this has an x squared in it and a y squared in it, I'm thinking it's probably one of my quadric surfaces. If I want to see if it truly is one of my quadric surfaces, I need to rearrange this equation so that it looks like those formulas. So the first thing that I would do after writing this down is square both sides in order to get rid of that square root because we know that squaring functions and square root functions, they undo each other. And then you just want to rearrange this guy by subtracting z from both sides, z squared from both sides. And so we end up with x squared plus y squared minus z squared equals zero. And remember, if two of those guys are positive, and then you've got one term that's negative, and all three are squared, and you've got a zero over here, um, that means um, that this represents an elliptic cone. And um, the two parts of the cone are going to lie parallel to the z axis. So it's going to open in the z direction. Um, it's centered at x naught, y naught, z naught, which comes from the numbers that are being subtracted from x, y, and z here. We're not subtracting anything from them. So this is centered at the origin, 0, 0, 0. Now, we have to remember our original equation, or this original equation. Um, z is a positive square root. So this is true, since this is true, but we should keep in mind um, on this equation, since z was a positive square root, z is greater than or equal to zero only. So it is an ellipti elliptic cone, excuse me, but it's not a double napped cone. It's just the part of the cone where z is positive. So it's, let's just write it as the top half of an elliptic cone. And then let's sketch our picture. So it's going to look roughly like this. An elliptic cone, that point at the origin. Okay. Now we're trying to find the surface area of something that looks like this. I wish I actually had a piece of paper that was, was formed into a cone. Um, we're just trying to find the, the area of that piece of paper. If you've ever had a a snow cone like we're just trying to find that that the area of that little wrapper around your snow cone um, okay um, so we're finding the area of this for all x y such that f is between 0 and 5 now f is just a stand-in for z remember in this case z is playing the role of those values of that function so this is saying that z is between 0 and 5 so I want the area of this whole sort of snow cone wrapper um, for z between 0 and 5. Now, um, the region r that we're integrating over is the set of all points x, y such that z lies between 0 and 5. So the region r is basically the shadow of this. It's, it's technically called the projection of this surface onto the xy plane. Um, but I like to think of it like a shadow. So let's say the sun is directly above the z-axis. So there's our sun. And it's casting a shadow down here. That shadow
uh, defines the region of integration R. Now, if you're saying to yourself, how do I find that boundary for R? Well, remember that boundary for R, R comes from setting Z equal to five. So um, Z is given by the square root of X squared plus Y squared. And again, if we square both sides, we get a familiar equation. That's x squared plus y squared equals 25. So in the xy plane, we're going to see that as our boundary, and we're talking about the interior of that circle, actually. That's a circle of radius 5 centered at the origin. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to get a sense of what's going on. So that goes to five and that goes to five and if we wanted, we could say y is going to negative five over there and then x is going to negative five over there. Okay, so that's our region R. Now, as soon as I see that circular region, I'm thinking I'm probably gonna, going to integrate this in polar coordinates. Um, so keep that in mind. All right, so we visualized our surface um, we visualize that region R that we're integrating over. Now that I have this picture of R, I can describe this. I can let X go from a function to a function and Y go from a constant to a constant. Or I can let Y go from a function to a function and X go from a constant to a constant. Or I can let R, that radius, go from zero to five and let theta go from zero to two pi if we switch to polar. Um, that would be fine. Okay, so we visualize this, that's first. And then the next thing we do is we're trying to find the area of the region. So let's write down our surface area formula. Surface area is the double integral over R of the square root of one plus the partial of F with respect to X squared plus the partial of F with respect to Y squared dA. And you can put partial of F or of Z with respect to X as well, it's the same thing partial of z with respect to y. So we just need to compute those two partial derivatives and substitute them in. Okay, now to compute those two partial derivatives, it's helpful to rewrite this as x squared plus y squared. And remember what that square root is, it's a one half power. So when I compute those two partial derivatives, I'm going to have to use the chain rule. That square root doesn't distribute over addition. You actually have to do this first and then take the square root. So this requires the chain rule. This is not the same as x plus y. You can tell right here. Z equals x plus y would be a plane. This is a cone. It's a completely different surface. Okay, so that's our uh, z rewritten. And we need partials with respect to x and y. So I'm taking the derivative of a function to the one half power. By the chain rule, we get one half of that function to the one less power, so that's negative one half. Put your inside function back inside. Don't change it yet. Don't take a derivative, just put it back in. Then multiply by the derivative of the inside with respect to x, treating y as a constant. Derivative of x squared with respect to x is two x. The derivative of y squared with respect to x is zero. The two and the one half reduce and we end up with an x in the numerator and this something to the negative one half power is that something, the positive one half power in the denominator. Okay, and I think we can see by symmetry what this is going to be. I've got a function of y to the one half, so we get one half of that function of y to the negative one half. times the derivative of the inside with respect to y, treating x as a constant. There's no y's in that, derivative of a constant is zero. The derivative of two y with respect to, or y squared with respect to y is two y, sorry about that. The two and the one half reduce and you end up with a y over the square root of x squared plus y squared here. Okay, so those are our terms. Let's substitute those into this guy.
And I think I'm just going to stick with the double integral over R of this function with um, respect to A, I guess dA over here um, for now. You're gonna see this actually turns out really nice. Square the numerator and denominator separately. Square the numerator and denominator separately there as well. You see it coming? Does that make you happy? It makes me happy. X squared plus Y squared over X squared plus Y squared. When we simplify it, those two have the same denominator. So you add the numerators, keep the common denominator. That's just X squared plus Y squared over itself. So it's one. So I've got one plus this, which is one. That's the square root of two times dA. Or if you prefer, you can call that the square root of two times the area of the region R. Now, if you want to, you could write dA equals R dr d theta and integrate from R equals zero to R equals five and integrate from theta equals zero to two pi to get that circle. But this is so much simpler than that. Um, there's a much simpler way. This is just the area of the circle. Um, the area of the circle is pi r squared. And your radius is 5. And so we've got the area of the circle times square root of 2, which is 25 pi times the square root of 2. And that's units squared. that is the surface area of this guy. That was our little snow cone wrapper. Uh, that, that little white piece of, of paper on the outside of your snow cone. This would be its area in units squared where the units are the same units used on the x-axis and the y-axis.